Hey everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma. This is such an interesting conversation that I just had with Ankur Variku. I have learned so much from his content, from his journey and from his book, Do Epic Shit. In this video particularly, Ankur talks about his own journey of building his team, Varikru. He talks about Shark Tank India, about crypto tax, about Web3, Metaverse, NFTs, the applications of Web3. He talks about finding love and happiness and what books he is reading right now. How does he remember all that he's reading. Make sure that you watch this till the very end. The timestamps are given below. You can move around if you want to. Make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe. And here is Ankur Variku. Hi Ankur, thanks a lot for joining us here. And how are you doing there? Very well, yeah, Rishan. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be back on your channel. And so much has happened since we last spoke. So I'm really excited about this. It has been nine months since we last talked and your growth has been amazing. I want to ask you this question. How do you create that genuine persona of yourself? Honestly, when I when I look at your videos, it looks like you're like a friendly father figure talking to me, just helping me out with my career, with startups and whatever, or the other videos that you make. How did you create this, this personality of yourself online? And I know it's genuine, so that is one thing, but how do you create that? Yeah, I, I think you answered the question, Nishan. Uh, it, it is genuine. It, it's frankly, like, I don't know the answer genuinely because you would meet me in a mall, you'll meet me on a YouTube video, you'll meet me on this podcast, you'll meet me in any place else. I'm exactly the same. Hi hunga. I will talk the same way, I'll emote the same way, I'll uh, receive you, greet you the same way. So it's, it's genuinely a joy to be living life in a manner where you don't have to dharan karna karna and you are exactly the way you are all the time. Because then you know that you're playing a game that you have designed for your own self. Right, right. You know, when you are getting all of this growth on YouTube, when you're getting the successes, how do you no not get egoistic and stay humble? and not get comfortable with the growth. You know, because when I was in my 11th grade, I was IIT JK and uh, I tried really well and I was doing really right? I was getting really well, uh, really nice ranks and grades back in 11th grade. And then that sort of made me comfortable. That made me like, that shark tank wala meme, na, bana lenge. Main bhi clear kar lunga. <laughs> and then reality hit me hard in 12th grade. So how do you make sure that that doesn't really happen? I think it's a, it's a journey. A lot of people, are not used to either success or failure. And because of that, when it happens, they don't know how to deal with it. Uh, I am 41, so I've had a really long experience of dealing with both uh, fame and recognition outside of what I'm doing right now uh, in the early days of being an entrepreneur. I've dealt with massive failures, whether it's money related, whether it's people related. So, uh, experiences and because of the fact that I tend to reflect a lot on whatever are these experiences and how they have shaped me, what have I learned, uh, I, I think I've gotten to a point where I, I understand what this is. So the objectivity of who am I in the entire scheme of things and who am I as an individual, these two are very dissociated. So there is an anchor who knows the world, who is YouTube, Instagram, who is making some content, who is making some course, who is writing a book, and blah, blah, blah. But then there is this anchor who lives in my mind. And that person is not big. He is a very simple person who wakes up in the morning, who lives in the world, 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 who lives in the world. And it's amazing how these two people are very different in my head. Because I know that this identity is what people love, but it's also an identity that I can easily let go if I have to let go at any point of time. But this is an identity that I absolutely am. Like, this is me. This is who I am truly. And um, I don't know if I'm making sense, but in my head, it's very, very clear that this sara recognition or sara love, hai, respect, hai, that is for a persona which people see online, but they don't know necessarily the real me. I know the real me and I'm in love with myself, but I also then live a very different mindset from that persona that people see. Right. How do you hire people at Varikru? Uh, and also, how do you make sure that they grow along with you, both in terms of incentives as well as in terms of learning? Yeah, that's a, that's a question I'm very passionate about. And, Generally, hiring people is something that I've always loved. 
because I am a firm believer that a large part of the outcome for any organization, any collective is determinant by the kind of people that there are and the kind of incentives that they have been given to shape up their lives. I have seen closely where the smartest people with the wrong incentives will falter. I have seen closely where mediocre or not so smart people with the right incentives will flourish. So I have always tried to bring the two together. So the first step is find people who are not necessarily the best at what they do, but they are the right kind of people when it comes to my persona. So I would love to spend time with them. I can relate to them. I can vibe with them. I can spend time with them, even if it is outside of work. And these are the kind of people whose values are aligned with how I would also look at the world. So a large part of my hiring, Ishan, is focused on finding these kind of people. So very surprisingly, I will not focus on the resume. I will not focus on the skills. Still a much, much later part of the hiring process. So it all starts with 15 questions that I send to everyone. And these 15 questions have nothing to do with their work. And these questions will be like, uh, what's the worst thing about you? Uh, pick between money and power, pick between speed and perfection. How often do you get angry? Why do you get angry? When was the last time you had self-doubt? So these are questions that help me understand that person really well uh, in a way that I would not on a resume. And then we give them questions to reflect on. So what are the things that you like about what we do at Brand Variku? What are the things that you feel we should not be doing? What are the things that we should stop? What are the things that we should introduce? Give us examples of other creators that you follow. What do you learn from them? So trying to get an overall understanding, then we'll give them, them some tasks and so on. And at that point of time is the first time we actually come face to face after series of eliminations, eliminations, eliminations and getting down to a smaller group. To give you a sense, we have recently hired a content management intern. Hire kiya hai. This person is responsible for distributing all the content that we produce across all the platforms that there are. Um, there were some, I think, 2,200 applications for this role. And we went through a almost three-week process we didn't ask resume, we didn't ask anyone, we Google form, and then after three weeks, those 2200 odd people will boil down to about seven people. And then Nishtha, who is the lead for content for the team, she met all those seven and then she picked up two, then I met those two and I finally picked up one. So it's a very, very evolved process. And us one me fir mujhe jaake pata chalta hai, achha aap college me hai, achha aap is college me hai, achha aapne ye sab cheeze kari hoi hai. Usse pehle koi farak nahi pata hai, we are always centered on the person. So that's the hiring piece. But that's only as you said, the one part of it and, and the start of it. But then you have to ensure that they continuously keep growing, they have the right incentives and so on. So we do three things for that. Number one, we give them all the financial incentives that they really do not have to worry about money or they do not have to think about money when they are working. It should not be something which is a troubling aspect. So we pay absolute market salaries, there is profit sharing for the entire team. So even interns would say get a stipend which is fixed but then get profit sharing every quarter which will be multiple times their stipend and, and frankly it is like Interns in, in, the, in the crew can easily over a year earn up to four to five ru lakh rupees. And this is an intern. So uh, this is purely because a lot of profit sharing is happening. So money is taken care of. The second thing, we take care of a lot of other perks that just make them not worry about other things in life as well. So online courses, karne hai, unlimited budget. Jo bhi course karna hai. Like, to logo ne do do teen lakh rupee ke course kiya hai. Perfectly fine. No difference between you are an intern, no difference between you are full-time. Whatever course will be the biggest, you select it, do it. So that's number one. Uh, four therapy sessions every month if you want to go through that. All premium subscriptions, YouTube, ho gaya, Spotify, there are thousands of things that we put our mind. All of that is paid for. Investments, ke liye, uh, small case, jo sare paid small cases hai, which I personally use, wo paid for. So you can start your investing journey. You don't have to think about 6,000 rupees, 12,000 rupees, blah, blah, blah. 
there is an offsite that happens every three months. So we all come together because it's a fully remote team. So there are 13 of us and we are spread across the country. So we make sure that every three months we come together. So a lot of nice, happy perks, which make them feel proud, which make them feel like they belong. And then the third and the most important thing is a very clear expectation setting of what is it that's expected from them? When is it that is expected from them? Very regular feedback on how well they're doing and mentoring and coaching on helping them improve. So everyone in the team gets 30 minutes with me one-on-one -on -one, and I would love to do that. They also get 30 minutes with Nishtha because you know, she is their core lead. We have a very clear process document where everyone's kya kaam karna hai, kab tak wo submit karna hai, kahan wo submit karna hai, that is absolutely clear. And then when they go through the one-on-one -on -one with me, I also give them feedback on how well they are doing, whether they are at par, what are my expectations, what are the things that they should be picking up. We create mini projects and so on. And that's the way it, it works. This in a nutshell is how the entire team is orchestrated. And as you can see, I'm, I'm very, very passionate about this because I genuinely love people building and organization building through that. And uh, I'm deeply invested in this have been for the last decade so i just continue doing that there is so much to learn from this you know because i am also recently trying to hire people i have a team of about 15 people working with me at market up so this is really important for me to actually learn sometimes what happens is that at market up people come in for the experience they make their portfolio edit videos make thumbnails whatever it is that the client requires and then they sort of end up leaving us and shifting and that sort of just just defeats the whole idea. Like I wanted people to grow with me over the long term. So my next question was, how do you make the, the memes on your Instagram? How does that happen? <laughs> so, the memes is something that we have recently figured. Yeah. Not, not recently figured, but recently started deploying for our own content. And uh, of course, everyone memes very much. And in our WhatsApp group, mein memes are shared. Hote rahte hai. And then we were like, yeah, let's, let's just have someone do this so there was a tweet uh, which was put out and it was a tweet which was around the fact that uh, you know, people in their 20s are struggling and so on and look at these 40 year olds who are having fun and uh, it was uh, it was basically a meme on Naval uh, Kunal Shah and me uh, and, uh, and and I loved that meme so so I got in touch and I was like hey would you want to create memes for us and you know, he was like great so we we engaged him for a three month period and the idea was let's just see where the memes go and very clearly the memes worked and worked wonderfully well especially on Instagram so uh, so after that we said okay let's formalize it so we went through again a memer selection process and we uh, had I, I think about 500 600 people apply then we went to the exact same thing that we did that I just described and eventually we we got one person so well, there is Jay who's who's working uh, with us as a as a memer and and what uh, what we do is there are also people within the team who are really good so there's Ria who is a who's a video editor and she's the one who edits all my ads for the courses so, but she's great with memes as well so so every week she will come up with some memes and then Jay will come up with some memes. We'll figure out which one of them works and then we'll just post and just see what it is. So we recently had a Tanmay Bhatwala meme template which was, which was a lot of fun. I loved it. I shared Tanmay too. He's like, wow. <laughs> that ACV Pradyuman wala after buying insurance. <laughs> that was really funny. That cracked me up when I saw it. I was like, this is a big deal. Right. Awesome. How did you get the idea of writing your book, Do Epic Shit? I read this. It's nothing out of the world, nothing new, but it's just little pieces, nuggets of wisdom on every single page. Really nice idea. How did you come up with this? So the, uh, there is a backstory to this, Ishan. And the backstory is, uh, I think it was around 2015 or something. I was on a panel discussion at a conference and one of my panelists was this lady uh, Chiki Sarkar and I frankly did not know of Chiki Sarkar until that point and uh, when I was there on the panel discussion I realized that uh, she is a very accomplished editor she uh, has just started her startup called Jagarnaut, which is into publishing and before that she was a very distinguished uh, head of publishing and she comes from a very distinguished family from the media industry and all that and once the panel discussion got over 
uh, I don't know what I said or how I conducted myself during the panel discussion, but she reached out to me and she's like, Ankur, you have a lot of books in you. And I was like, what are you doing? You're just being nice because at that point of time, 2015, like, it was a dream, but there was no idea that we would never write it. And, uh, and then, of course, we, we just stayed in touch, but I, I frankly never paid any heed to her, her comment. And as the content journey started to unfold and the following started to increase, a lot of people started asking, hey, are you writing a book? Are you writing a book? Are you writing a book? And I was like, eh, maybe, maybe not, who knows? But then suddenly publishing houses started to reach out. And it's like, hey, we would love to publish your first book. We would love to publish your book. Are you keen? Are you keen? And then like, it's a little serious. If the market is telling me that I should be doing something that, why don't I create something that the market wants? And at that point of time, I realized that I wanted to go back to Chiki because she was the one who first identified that I had a book in me. Uh, and I said, I would love to publish my first book with you. And she was very gracious. And so I said, great, I have waited and you know, let's do this. So that was the the idea, uh, I think, late tw uh, late 2020, uh, early 21, that uh, we we signed the deal and we said, let's let's make it happen. And then it was very clear that I wanted my first book to be for people who don't read books or who very rarely read books or have never read a book because I didn't want to write a book that won any literary prize or was uh, was acknowledged at a literature fest or anything like that. Like I, I really didn't care about that. What I wanted was a book that was so easy and yet so helpful that anybody would want to pick it up and just start reading. And, and that's why I started writing a book about my life, but I very quickly realized that this is a book that I should write in the end and not at the start. So I pushed that book out to, I don't know, when I'll be 60, 80 or something. And like Pehli book, mein, I will just share whatever is it that I've learned from life without talking about my life as such. And that's why the book was written in that manner. No start, no finish. There's no story. Every page is a standalone page. Everything is something that you can take away from. You can literally open up the book from any page and start reading from there. And it is easy. It's, it's a lot of white space. So if people want to write something on that, scribble their notes, they can do that. It's also good for sharing on Instagram. <laughs> it is great for sharing. It is very, very, it is very, very Instagrammable. So, so everything was there. And then of course I put on my marketing cap and like, you know, how do excitement generate karenge and now what do people care about? So on. And then it was also very obvious that I wanted to name the book, do epic shit, because that's an identity that I've been living with for the last decade or so. Uh, and it just so happened ki jab maine ye, studio setup banaya and do a picture ka poster dala uh, it was only later that i realized ki uh, subliminally i i started creating that uh, subconscious hook that people associated me with do epic shit <clears throat> and that's why the book then landed well awesome well this book is really nice so my next question is have you watched shark tank india and what are your views on it <laughs> yeah i have watched shark tank india um not a not a big fan, but I'll tell you why. It's it's not frankly because of the main reasons that people speak about. So, mere liye, I, I think it's a very smart and a very self-aware thing that the show is structured in a manner that is dramatized, that is very high on emotions, that is very high on decibel volume. Because Hindustan is like that. Like at the end of it, you can't run away from the fact that our जो पूरा कल्चर है यू हैव टू सॉर्ट ऑफ मैच दैट टोन ऑफ तारक मेहता और लक्ष्मा देन पर्सन कमिंग ऑन टू शार्क टैंक एब्सोल्युटली राइट तो वो वो होगा थोड़ा सा रोना धोना होगा थोड़ा सा नो अंधी माँ और बिन ब्याही बहन की वो स्टोरी होगी वो वो सारी चीजें होनी चाहिए राइट दिस इज हाउ दैट एंटायर कल्चर इज बट so I, I don't have any disregard for that like if if i were also to create a show i would perhaps do it in somewhat the same manner i have a fundamental disconnect with the entire proposition of shark tank itself not just india but even even the us but the us does a slightly better job in india may maybe because it's the first season and not and that is hindustan ka startup or entrepreneurial culture na abhi puri tarah se evolve nahi hua hai while we think that har ek insaan sir startup startup bhi kar raha hai but it is still very very early days and there is a lot that has to be done to build this ecosystem out 
So what happened with Make My Trip and Nokri in the 90s and then happened with Flipkart in the in the 2000s and now is of course happening almost every day with some unicorn or the other coming up. The worst thing that we can build as a culture is to assume that funding is equivalent to starting up or funding is the success for a startup. So I get emails which are like कि हमने देखा कि एक startup था सात साल से जस्तो जहत कर रहा था fight मार रहा था फिर वो shark tank पे आया उनको पैसा मिल गया तो आप बताइए कि उनको सात साल क्यों wait करना पड़ा पैसे raise करने के लिए and I was like boss you have to realize कि अगर सात साल तक कोई धंधा नहीं बना पाया and उनको अभी भी funding की जरूरत थी तो शायद धंधे में ही कोई कमी है and you have to be very objective about this. You can't be running a company and raising money to survive. You have to raise money to grow, not to survive. And that is my disconnect. That when people look at valuation, they think how much they want, they think how much they want, they think how much they want, then suddenly it takes you away from the core thesis of building. Like, now, no conversation can be said, no conversation can be said, but I have heard a lot of conversation on Shark Tank, which is around team building which is around processes, which is around founder mindset, which is around ki kaun kaun si mushkilein hai outside of money that you have to solve for and how and why. Uh, and I'm just worried and I'm really hopeful that this worry, the worry is not established on anything concrete. I'm just worried ki Hindustan mein ek aisi generation nahi paida honi chahiye jahaan wo bolenge ki bhai startup karne ka sab se pehla step hota hai funding. And if there's funding, then there won't be a start-up. That is really important. My next question was, who is your favorite shark? And can we see you on Shark Tank next season? Yeah, the fun fact is this. And I'm saying it in public for the first time. If you can see the Shark Tank episode of Shark Tank on YouTube, which comes to Set India or Sony India channel, and click on the description, then it's written on the guest's name of my name. And I don't know why that is, right? So one of the six sharks, one shark's name is missing. And it is not something recent. I wouldn't name that shark. You'll find that out yourself. That shark's name is missing. And my name is there as one of the judges. And I'm like, what's going on? Because uh, like open disclosure. Were they trying to do SEO on that video? <laughs> Open disclosure, I have not been approached by Shark Tank to become a shark and I, I, I was not part of the consideration for season one. So I didn't have to refuse it or something like that. Uh, will I be on Shark? I really do not know. Yaar. My, my gut tells me no because of the reason that I explained to you right now. Uh, but I don't know if things will change. So never say never. Um, but yeah, that's where it is. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what what do you see in the future for NFTs and metaverse? I saw that video of yours in which uh, it was like a tutorial video going on to OpenSea and buying that three dollar do epic shit poster, that profile picture of yours. After 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 spending fourteen hundred in gas fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what 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 what's going to happen in the future according to you? for this thing. Yeah, it is a very, very exciting time, Ishan. And uh, it's exciting for uh, for three reasons specifically. Number one, it's exciting for people who are going to play a development role in Web3. So Web2, when it was made, which is around 2004-2005, all the way up to 2010, those people who have mobile development, whether on Android, whether on iOS, or the backend, of the, the infrastructure of that entire social network piece and everything around that, they are the ones in the best positions today. Like they are the ones with the most money, they are the ones with the most experience, they are the ones who are the most respected in their fields. And I think that is the wave that is happening right now as well. Ki abhi, irrespective of how old you are, but mostly younger people will pick this up. Agar aap ghus gaye Web3 development mein, not from a, oh, NFT mein trade karte hain, crypto kharitte hain, but genuine development of the infrastructure, assign yourself or align yourself with projects that are so meaningfully there. And in Hindustan mein itne achche badiya badiya project nikal rahe hain. Like Polygon recently raised 450 million from Sequoia and the likes, which is a crazy amount 
going to to something which is a, a Web3 project from India. Uh, EPNS uh, is such a great one where an entire push notification system uh, and uh, and the entire protocol is being built for the Web3 world, which doesn't even exist. Like, imagine how notifications ke kitne aadi ho chuke hain in the app world, or asa koi bhi infrastructure abhi exists nahi karta hai for Web3. So there is no communication layer from a push perspective or even a pull perspective uh, to notify you of whatever price changes or smart contract expiry or whatever the case may be. So that's number one, which is just serious work around the development point. Second is this massive move towards not so much decentralization, which is Web3 ka core, hai, but I think more importantly around ownership. So I have this sweater and I know this is my sweater and I know this is my sweater because I have this sweater physically, like I can touch it, feel it. But imagine when you are in the metaverse, ye kiski sweater hai? no one knows. Like it can be anybody's. And that is why Web3 becomes so, so cool and such a powerful thing because translate your real life into a digital life and then try and imagine ki jis cheez ko hum bahut for granted lete hain, ki ye pen mera hai kyunki ye mere haath mein hai. Jab aap digital dunya mein honge, to वो किसका पेन है आपने किसी से उठाया है चुराया है या आपका ये खुद का पेन है उसको एस्टेब्लिश करना विल बी अ फंडामेंटल प्रॉब्लम एंड दैट इज व्हाई एवरीथिंग अराउंड डिजिटल ओनरशिप व्हिच इज कि ये एक वॉलेट एड्रेस को बिलोंग करता है जो कि मेरा वॉलेट एड्रेस है एंड मेरा नाम कुछ भी हो सकता है अंकुर हो सकता है या do a picture ho sakta hai, doesn't matter, but it is important ki mere wallet se ye pen joda hua hai and everyone in the world instantly gets to know ki ye mera pen hai. So it's the second thing around ownership. And then is the third thing, which is perhaps the most fascinating thing for me, that the combination of Web3 and the metaverse is going to completely change the way we experience things forever, for the rest of our lives. Travel will change, Education will change, social interactions will change, communication will change, ownership will change. And that means we are actually getting into a very interesting phase for humanity, not just for internet and blah blah. Jahan jis dhang se hum zindagi jeete aaye hai, wo bohat bohat alag hone wali hai. It is possible that the entire world will get spread out, it will not be located in cities, not even the key countries jahan hum population dekhte hai, but people will live and stay wherever they want to because they can easily transport themselves to any place they want at the click of a button and experience that in almost real sensitivity as we do in life today uh, and that uh, is, uh, is is fascinating yeah. it is fascinating I, I, I use this example aap ye ped dekh sakte hai ye nakli ped hai and uh, ये पेड़ जो है ये मैंने इसलिए यहाँ रखा हुआ है क्योंकि I want to maintain continuity in my videos तो अगर मैं असली पेड़ डालता तो कभी नो पर्दझड़ है कभी स्प्रिंग है कभी पत्ते हरे हैं कभी पीले हैं कभी है ही नहीं तो इसको मेंटेन नहीं कर सकते राइट तो एक नकली पेड़ डाल दिया है लेकिन हमारी आँखों को ये पता नहीं है कि ये नकली है या असली है हमारे दिमाग को पता है कि ये नकली है लेकिन हमारी आँखें अभी भी उसको वैसे ही रिएक्ट करेंगी जैसे कि दे वुड रिएक्ट टू अ रियल पेड इन रियल लाइफ एंड दैट इज द पावर ऑफ हाउ आर सेंसेस बिहेव आर माइंड नोज दैट इट इज आर्टिफिशियल एंड दैट्स व्हाई ऑल आर सेंसेस रिएक्ट अकॉर्डिंगली बट व्हाट इफ यू गॉट टू अ पॉइंट वेयर योर माइंड इज आल्सो कन्विंस दैट दिस इज रियल एंड आई नो आई एम टॉकिंग अ लिटिल मेट्रिक्सी स्टफ but neural link <laughs> by elon musk yeah, is exactly, making something right. like it is, it is all a reality where if the mind is tricked into believing that what you are experiencing is real then all your senses will align accordingly and will not know the difference right the startup space around web3 is going really crazy as well there's crazy wealth transfer happening alchemy is a startup for example that builds apis for uh, web3 framework of javascript and they had i think 500 million dollar valuation nine months ago right now they're at 10.2 billion dollar valuation they just raised a lot more so it's a really exciting time for startups in web3 as well it's crazy yes <laughs> do you think the 30% crypto tax legalizes crypto and the you know Indian government has sort of accepted it. And what do you think about the CBDC that they're trying to create, the digital rupee? I I, I still don't. Well, one thing is 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 certain, and I like that. 
that there is at least a conversation at the governance level around Web3. Like that for me is a good start. So I tweeted about this. That the, the news is not the 30% tax. The news is that governance is talking about Web3 as a concept, which is a great start. 30% crypto tax, no, 20% will be losses, gains pe nahi hoga, wo losses accumulate karke ho jayega. Like all this is progressive. It, it's just temporary. So it's frankly, in, in my head, uh, it is futile to even respond to these things because all of them are just such microcosms to the larger play that's supposed to be there. Digital rupee is, is interesting, at least conceptually. Uh, what does it mean? Will it still be centralized? Will it still be anonymous uh, or not? Will it be uh, tracked to a person or a wallet? Uh, these are still open questions, and, and I think uh, once you have the white paper in it and we begin to read it and dig deeper into it, we will we'll realize that. But I do feel that it's a very, very interesting proposition that just like countries earlier had currencies, uh, well, still do, whether it's the US dollar or the Indian rupee or the UK pound, um, we now are, are trying to create an entire digital identity around it. And, and that combined with you know, UPI, that combined with uh, tokenization, uh, it's just going to bring a whole new wave of innovation in the next 10 to 20 years. So I feel people tend to react a lot to the se announcements jo hote hain, us point pe, which frankly are, are not entirely thought through. Because the government can't think about everything about it. There will be no person who will make a mistake and make a mistake. Ek bana dega. But at the end of it, if the conversation has started and we, we have reasons to believe that uh, in the past things that started were brought to some sort of a logical closure or, or at least an eventuality, then there's nothing to suggest that uh, that wouldn't happen here as well. What books are you currently reading right now? I, uh, I just finished with uh, Persuasion, which is a brilliant book by Robert Cialdini. Um, and it's... Uh, I, so I love human psychology in general, and, and this is a terrific, terrific book. I'd read it a long time back, but I'd forgotten most of it. So it was a nice, happy refresher. I am now reading this uh, brilliant book that I had wanted to read for a long time called Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. He is the guy behind The Daily Stoic. So it's, it's one of the best books that he has uh, written. And I, I genuinely follow Stoicism a lot. So... It's something that I, uh, I'm enjoying. I'm in the middle of, but I'm enjoying a lot. Mm -hmm. How do you remember all that you were reading? Yeah, I, um, one, I don't try to. And, and that's just a philosophy in life in general. Uh, I don't try and remember anything in life. So everything is a pen on paper, or a calendar, or an email. Pe hota hai. So I do not try and spend my mind's energy or power in trying to remember anything. And it's crazy how choti choti cheeze bhi, I just take it out of my mind. No, chahe wo birthday ho, anniversary ho, bill pay karna ho, kuch bhi. So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to books, I feel that the, the way that it works for me is one, go through the physical exercise of highlighting something that you would want to retain. So I read my books on Kindle first and Kindle makes it really nice to highlight. I then export those highlights in a PDF, which also is very easy on Kindle. So I email it to me <clears throat> and then I take a printout of that. And after a week or two weeks of reading that book, I go through those highlights again not with any specific intention, but just to go through them again. What tends to happen though, is when I'm going through those highlights, I've somehow lost the context of the highlight. So there, it may be just a line, but with a broader context, but in the absence of that context, that line by itself then helps me or not. So if I just line, padunga, it may create zero impact or it may be like, wow, this is something that I remember and I can see how it will apply. And then I'll make a mental note of, where I can use this, what I can use it for, how can it help me change my life, whatever. And I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> if I really like the book, I'll buy a paper copy of the book and I'll pick it up sometime uh, later in life in a, in a hand format. But uh, I think this simple exercise by itself of highlighting, exporting it, going through it once more, and then making notes of 
how can it actually bring a change uh, that itself is enough for me to retain it so i then operate with the self belief ki jis samay pe is cheez ki zarurat hogi kuch na kuch jadoo se wo cheez dimag mein aa jayegi nahi aayi to koi farak nahi padta aa gayi to bahut badhiya hai logo ko lagega main smart hu nahi aayi to main fight marta rahunga <laughs> amazing you recommended that book can't hurt me in one of your videos and i and i started listening to that on 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 an audiobook app really amazing book and it really changes your perspective about life like i just think i've done nothing when compared when compared with david goggins it is so hard hitting man and he's such a great narrator like i i i think that audiobook is one of the best audiobooks because he just he just says it with such passion and he's just so transparent so authentic that it is very hard not to fall in love with him totally how do you uh... do you listen to podcasts and if so like what podcast do you like listening to the most yeah i um, i don't actively listen to podcasts the the one that i do listen to is the tim ferris show and and that too when it is uh, it's something which is a, a highly recommended one something which is very very different on a topic that i would want to <clears throat> or any of my favorite creators has gone on some podcast so recently for example i follow this guy called jordan peterson and and i like him for his audacity i like him for uh, his positioning as an academic and how he brings his research into all his comments and his uh, no reversals and and he was on the joe rogan uh, show so uh, so i listened to that uh, but then if no if if tim ferris is there like one of the podcasts i recently listened to uh, was the uh, naval ravi kant uh, chris dixon and tim ferris conversation on uh, web3 and right right web3 composability they were talking about that and it's it's a very very simple but a very powerful podcast uh, will act as a great reminder to all those around just the power of what it is trying to accomplish and and the uh, the complexity that still lies ahead of us so long answer short sorry <laughs> so long answer short the uh, the podcast piece is is not something that i actively pursue but i do pick up episodes which relate to me mm-hmm. just for the audience that is listening this right now bankless is an amazing podcast that i just listen to about web3 and crypto stuff so that's also really not nice how do you uh, maintain deep focus um, and avoid quick dopamine burst you know what happens is when people ask me this question um, All of this is happening online. The studies are happening online. So phone पे जाते हैं, Google Classroom खोलते हैं. उसके just बगल में Instagram होता है. पांच मिनट Instagram store कर लेते हैं, reels को, and then they just get back to the work. And then it just takes them a lot longer to get back to what they are focusing on. So how do you maintain that deep focus on whatever you are working on right now? Uh, there are there there are three hacks that I deploy. Uh, number one is uh, I actually schedule time waste hours as well. so a lot of people schedule only productivity hours and and i feel that that is not the complete picture because if you schedule for productivity then you will trick your mind into believing that you are doing a lot more than you are because of which any excuse for you to step away from that and distract yourself will feel like a legitimate excuse it's almost like jab log bahut workout karte hain then they feel like are ab to main donut kha sakta hu ab to main meetha kha sakta hu so it's the same thing <laughs> right so along with productivity schedules also schedule your time waste hours like literally say ki aaj aaj nahi but har roz 11 se 11:30 main instagram reels dekhunga aur kuch aur nahi karunga hmm. like uska koi purpose nahi hoga wo mujhe zindagi mein kahin aage nahi le jayega and i will still do it because it is part of my schedule so that's number one hmm. which is a great hack number two Uh, i think phones now are absolutely sophisticated and and worthy enough to have all sorts of blockers and time limits uh, people don't use it because they don't want to but you can easily put up uh, a blocker on any of the apps that you are excessively obsessed with or feel that is a source of distraction and usko unlock karne ke liye jo pin chahiye hota hai wo pin aapko nahi kisi aur ko pata hona chahiye तो वो आपके पेरेंट्स हो सकते हैं आपके दोस्त हो सकते हैं आपके पार्टनर हो सकता है कोई भी बट गिव द पिन टू समन एल्स टेल देम नेवर टू शेयर इट विद यू एंड अगर कभी भी इमरजेंसी में कुछ खुलवाना हो तो उनसे पूछ के या उनसे करवा के आप खुलवाएंगे बट इट इज़ नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन जस्ट रैंडमली सो दैट राइट 
this is a really important tip for everyone to understand this is, this is a like and it's a very simple hack but it it just works and it works very powerfully and uh, right and the third one is uh, following the the pomodoro technique it's uh, it's it's mm. so fundamental and yet so powerful that it's crazy so many people don't do that uh, for the benefit of those who do not know pomodoro pomodoro is basically a unit of 30 minutes where you would work for 25 minutes and then you take a break for 5 minutes then you work again for 25 take a break for 5 so you have that pomodoro of 30 minutes as your slab and after you've done four or five of these pomodoros you would take a longer 30 minute break and then you get back into the pomodoros again in a day if you are able to accomplish anywhere between four to six pomodoros that is really high quality work and trust me if you were to do that then those two to three hours of deep focus work where you are attentive not distracted will yield a lot more outcome Uh, then the 8 hours that you just while away and and sit on many people end up doing the reverse pomodoro 5 <laughs> minutes of <over. laughs> like w- work is what i do between instagram breaks <laughs> <laughs> how do you overcome the fear of rejection and failure you know sort of a <laughs> valentines week question <laughs> yaar zindagi mein jab itna dekha hota hai na to aadat pad jati hai so this is something that people don't uh, know and and i don't blame them if they are very young getting used to failure is also a habit but if you haven't failed then each time you fail it hits you it's like the first time we fall it hits us the first time we go through a breakup it hits us the first time we lose money it hits us the first time we earn money is hits us the first time we fall in love it hits us the first time we are able to run really fast it hits us so every first time it's going to hit us meaningfully but the next time it won't the next time it will not even further the next time it will just become normal and that's true for both bad and good experiences it's the truth of life what people do is they're so scared of failing that they try and prevent that experience of failing for the longest time and push it out as far as they can but unfortunately because of that the day they fail they just crumble because they are not even used to that So I often say practice failing. As crazy as it sounds, practice failing. Because you can actually practice failing in things that are very low risk, very low impact. For example, whenever you step out, when and and I'm hoping now it happens more with the web web 3 bowl now, with wave 3 receding and everything else, the dhamag may be web 3 chal raha hai to with wave 3 coming down and and hopefully covid settling. you stepping out whether it's for college whether it's for shopping whether it's meeting friends and what not just ask strangers for their phone to make a call do that as a discipline because a lot of people will say no and you have to experience that to practice failing send a cold email every day 95% of them will never reply to you it will hit but you will get so comfortable with it that that 5% when it happens will be enough for you to drive yourself forward if you're scared of public speaking you're in college go and please stand on stage go and stand in front of your class kya ho jayega zyada se zyada log aap pe hasenge aapka mazak udayenge that's what you have to get used to kyunki us samay pe to kuch farak nahi padta aapki zindagi mein aapki puri zindagi un 5 6 logon ke hansi se nahi badalne wali but if you go through that experience consistently in a disciplined manner it is going to make you comfortable with failing so the next time you fail which we eventually will all fail you will know how to process it it will not crumble and crush you it will be something that you experience learn from reflect and then move forward yeah yeah brilliantly explained uh here's a personal question that i have is there any such thing like a perfect time to find your partner or just someone to spend life with <laughs> you know because sometimes what happens is that right now i sometimes feel like okay i should only focus on my career hustle 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 all day long then sometimes i'm just like i can work on my business i can work on youtube but then i can also have someone to just share the wins and losses of life what do you think about that i no i don't think there is a there is the right time to do it but i do feel that one shouldn't rush into it i have uh, often said there are two things that determine almost 90% of 
what happens to us in our lives. One is the family we are born into and two is the partner we choose to live our life with. And it is crazy how many people do not agree with that, which is perfectly fine. But to me, it is just so starkly obvious that the family that you were born into, the kind of values that you've been given, the kind of love, support, education, everything that you got is such a big determinant to how or what kind of a person you have become. And the partner that you choose to spend your life with is going to determine and influence so many of your life decisions, even your risk propensity, even your ambition, even your love, even your companionships, even your friends. So much of that is going to be influenced by your partner. So don't rush into it. Koi jaldi nahi hai. Bilkul koi jaldi nahi hai. Take your time. Find out. Please mat karna yaar. Please. And you know what? It, it, it sounds hypocritical because I, I met my future wife when I was 19 and, and we started dating when I was 20. But I still feel that I can say this because we got married when we were 27. So when we got married, we had known each other for seven years. And that was enough time for me to know that she would be the one that I would thoroughly enjoy my life with. Uh, and, and, and that is something which was important. Like it's not that we started dating at 20 and then got married at 21. We, we went through two years of long distance when I was in the US and, and that taught us a lot. We went through another year of long distance when I was at ISB in Hyderabad, that taught us a lot. She started working earlier than me, saw money earlier than me, in fact supported me when I was not even earning, that taught us a lot. I went to a, a very um, demanding job after ISB of consulting where I was again traveling for five days a week and we rarely met um, except for the weekends, but that taught us a lot. So there, were, there was a lot that happened to each other in the last seven years that uh, still told us that if we are together and we have found a way to make it work, uh, we will hopefully find a way to make it work forever. How do you spend the most amount of money so that you can achieve the most happiness? <laughs> how do you spend money so that you can achieve the most amount of happiness? Because you know, everyone talks about how to make money, how to, how to get into more side hustles and stuff. But how can I maximize happiness with spending money? Or do you even think that is, that is possible? It's funny you ask this question, Ishan. I have a video shoot uh, which was driven by the exact same thought kier paise kamana aur kitna like you made a video on how much money you made i made a video on that no ali has made a video on that sab log bana rahe hain right exactly are itna paisa ye ho gaya but uh, but i thought yaar agar wo video bana raha hai to usko balance karne ke liye ye bhi video banana chahiye ki maine apne paise kharch kahan kare and what are the things that i so i actually made that video and because i track all my money uh, i knew it to the last decimal of what category i'd spent that money on and and where was it going but for me the the headline is 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 very um, there are there are three fundamental things that both Ruchi and I believe we should be spending our most monies on. Number one is our education, and that means the education of our kids and our own personal education, whether it's books, whether it's courses, whether it's anything else. So that's where a bulk of our money goes. Uh, a surprisingly high amount, especially for our kids' education because they go to a, a fancy school which is very expensive and blah, blah. Number two is on making sure that our needs are met in, in a way that we don't have to think about just fulfilling and getting our basic standard of living up and down. So we spend a lot of money on hiring help so that it frees up our time. <coughs> and I often tell myself, my team and, and Ruchi that if you can replace your time with either technology or someone else who needs that money more than you do, that's the best use of your money. Don't even think twice about giving that. Like even if it costs more than what the person would cost. Now in Hindustan, the problem is that labor is so cheap that the discussion of software use that someone puts an intern that will take an Excel sheet from one data point se wo nikal ke wo karta rahenge. And I'm like, boss, it doesn't matter. Just because that intern is sasta doesn't mean that you should be wasting their time there you should be getting the software and irrespective of how much it costs. So we spend a lot of money in making sure that we eat high quality food, we 
employ people that can help us in every possible dimension and and we just <clears throat> do that a lot and the third and the big expense then is experiences we we love traveling we love spending our money on not things so we are both not stuff people cheeze kharidne ka bilkul shauk nahi hai gaadi ka koi shauk nahi hai mehenge gadgets ka koi shauk nahi hai kahin bangla kharidne ka koi shauk nahi hai koi aise armaan nahi hai ki yahan पहाड़ों में घर हो फिर लंदन में भी घर हो यहाँ भी घर हो ऐसा कुछ नहीं आ, बहुत खुश हैं हम जो हमारी ओनरशिप्स हैं अभी बट वी वुड लव टू स्पेंड मनी ऑन ऑन एक्सपीरियंसिस ऑन ट्रैवलिंग मीटिंग न्यू पीपल विजिटिंग न्यू प्लेसेस एंड एंड दैट्स वेयर द थर्ड एंड द बिग कैटेगरी इज awesome what's your content strategy going to look like this year uh, i've seen you upload a lot more shorts what other things are you trying to get into can we see like a podcast type thing happening in which like you bring in guests and stuff yeah uh, uh no most likely not and and the simple reason is because there is dependency then on others which i don't like because i want to be fully in control of my time and not be at the women fancy or someone else's calendar which i totally respect right? because they are they are busy and blah 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 so most like well, at least there is massive inertia in me to have a podcast which is conversational right? so all all respect to you and to to ranveer and the likes who who consistently do this and do it so well uh, but kam se kam mere mere bas ka to nahi hai at least meri propensity to nahi hai karne ki but to answer your broader question um, i think there are uh, the two or three things that that are going to happen uh, we we're definitely going to make uh, meaningful investments in in more courses that are going to help our audiences so uh, you will see a, a few more courses being being launched we we launched we are just about to conclude our first batch of uh, how to youtube which is a 3 month course on the entire process of youtubing and we thoroughly enjoyed with those 30 people uh, you know spending 3 months and just navigating through that journey it was just so wonderful so that is going to become a a mainstream thing uh, think of it like a hindi version or a indianized version of ali abdal's course and uh, and then uh, there will be a few more courses around just adulting in general which i feel is is something that college uh, school does a poor job of teaching if at all uh, so that's on the courses piece on the on the content piece uh, there uh, there are a few ideas that i that i have uh, one of which is definitely to move towards a community than a following uh, i i realize the following has uh, has brilliant benefits because people have a central source of experience truth wisdom whatever else you may call it uh, so there is a natural affinity but I, what i also realize is that if you have 4 and 1/2 million people now 5 million actually we we touched 5 million last week we have 5 million people across all platforms following you there is just so much that they know within themselves uh, which they could help each other with so i want to take the first steps towards building that community and that will be a meaningful investment that we'll make this year um because if if that flourishes uh, then then that becomes a, a self fulfilling mechanism where it doesn't require me anymore and and that's the best part of it if i can dissociate myself and detach myself from everything and still continue to help people that will be the best position to be in to to wo hai and uh, and hopefully the the next book <laughs> that would be amazing all right thanks a lot ankur i just have one last question for you and that is what has been one of the best cold emails that you've recently received <laughs> yeah uh, i i i received so many and i'm in awe of so many of them uh, i don't remember anything particularly but there was one that stood out which was uh, a cold email that was not how should i have even put it 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 didn't have any objective which is one of those emails that i usually will dismiss because the the email did not have any purpose but it was just so brutally authentic where the way it was written it was very very friendly uh, it used normal language uh, it 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 called it fluctuated between calling me sir to calling me bhaiya to calling me ankur Uh, all in in the span of like just thirty seconds of reading, so I I just loved just the raw nature of it, and and there was no ask, and and it started with that like it literally said, this email will serve no purpose, so feel free to not read it, and that email will always catch my attention, always catch my attention, so I I loved how the reverse psychology played because then after that it was just a wonderful wonderful read. 
Amazing. Thanks a lot for joining us here. I wish you all the best for your content, for the new courses, your ads. I saw that one ad in which you're telling people to block you from from seeing your ads. That's how really creative work that you're doing over there. That's incidentally the best performing ad. Huh? <laughs> like, I, and, and, and I love that. That's that's why I'm such a sucker of human psychology because you, you just understand so much about people uh, without really knowing them. <laughs> Yeah. No, I got the I got the course and it's still telling me uh, showing me that ad. Aapne mere video de ki but aapne course de liya. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no. Thank you for having me, Ishan. I I love what you're doing. Please continue doing it. You're you're helping so many people and and you're genuinely an inspiration for so many who look up to you. Yeah. And and I'm so glad that you took this journey on and and you're discovering your own self. I'm sure it's not easy. you have your lows and you and you have your tough days but you you make it look very effortless and then that's a cop just trying to learn as many things as possible you know like 9 months ago people will watch that podcast you will see that i have some hesitation i wasn't able to express myself properly properly in the last one that we had right now i think i have progressed a little bit it's it's like every every year you'll be a changed person man and, and that's the best thing right awesome thanks a lot all the best man take care <laughs> That was a video. I hope you got to learn something from this. If you have one lesson that you've learned, let us know in the comment section as well. You can also tweet about this episode. Uh, you can tag me as well as Ankur Variku. Do take a look at my Instagram and Twitter for more podcasts and you know just interesting content. I will see you all in the next video. You can also take a look at the first podcast that we recorded with Ankur with the link in the description. That was an amazing conversation as well. Thank you so much. Bye bye.